Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to take a look at one of our favorite games, Ghost Stories, and its first big box expansion, Ghost Stories White Moon. Ghost Stories is a one to four player cooperative game that can be played in about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, the gameplay mechanics revolve around area movement, dice rolling, there is a modular board inside which we'll go through, and some variable player powers depending on which of the Taoist monks you choose from. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the box and show you what comes inside. So before we start, I just wanted to let everyone know that I have fit all the components from inside the White Moon expansion inside of the original Ghost Stories box. So we're not going to see any of the components. What I will show you is the insert. There is a large number of components in this game, and it is possible while keeping the original insert to fit everything back inside the original box. So with that, let's open up White Moon and see what comes inside. And as I mentioned, all that's inside here right now is the insert. Underneath the insert, I have put some of the additional manuals. Now, the original game in this game ships with some language manuals that are different than the U.S. English version. And what I've done is just keep everything inside here and put it underneath of this um, cardboard insert itself. So pushing that aside, let's go ahead and look at the inside of Ghost Stories itself. So taking up the box lid, the first thing you're going to notice are two different errata sheets. One of them comes from the White Moon expansion, which is this one. And again, there's multiple different languages, but this is the only version that talks about the English issues with the game. And then there's errata that originally shipped with the Ghost Stories original game, talking about the Enfeeblement Mantra and the Circle of Prayer as well. The first thing you're going to notice is the rule book. The rule book is full color front to back, very easy to understand with charts giving you all the different phases of the game, for instance the yin phase and the yang phase in the game. There's a couple of different player aids that are included. Now on the back side of these player aids are different languages that are unneeded. They could have put, um, as you notice here, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's an abilities of the ghost player aid and a village player aid, and they should have kept the English on a front and back, but yet they put different languages on the back. Now they've corrected that with the White Moon expansion by putting one of the player aids on the back side of the other player aid, both in the English language. And again, that's what I'm trying to say. One is English and one is, I'm not sure which language it, this is on the back. It may be French or German. Um, there's a scoring sheet, which I've never used. You can keep track of the gameplay and your scoring. Here is the White Moon player aid. And as you notice, it has the effects of the villagers on one side in English. And then on the back side, they've also put English. And these are the description of all the artifacts that ship with the game. Now this was a good choice and it wasn't done in the original, but they've corrected that with this expansion. Then we have the White Moon rulebook inside as well. Again, full color, front to back, very easy to understand the rules, no problems at all. And again, a, a nice chart with the additional um, rules set that's been included on the back of this one, giving you the turn sequence. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of components in this game, and we're going to dig into them right now. Just notice that everything has fit back in this original box. It's tight, but it works. The first thing you notice is the graveyard tile. These are for all the dead, the dead villagers. Now, you can have 12 villagers dead before you lose the game. And it's got some wonderful artwork on all the cards, and we'll go through those. This ships with White Moon. And then you have the safety board. This is where all of the village tiles will go once you rescue them. And again, wonderful art, front to back, thick cardboard stock, very thick cardboard stock. There's four player boards representing the four Taos monks in the game. Each of them are double-sided, showing you one of their two powers. For instance, this is the green Taos monk and he's able to roll a fourth die and does not have to roll the cursed die and on the back side his power is he gets to roll one of the regular dice and he gets to re-roll the cursed die now each of these four village or four Taos monk um, player boards has both sides and they're all color coordinated to represent the different colors so yellow blue and we already showed you the red and the green 
Then inside the box itself, I fit everything inside here. I've used a, um, a fishing lure box. Now this isn't a Plano box. I got this at a craft store, actually. Um, I have a deck box with all the cards, and then all of the village tiles are put in here. Now it's extremely tight in here, so it's not able to move or shift. So let's take these out and show you exactly what is in here. The first thing you'll notice are all of the, um, the ghost cards and the incarnations of Wu Fang. I've sleeved all of them and put them inside of a deck box, and we'll break these out and show you them to you in just a moment. We have all of the village tiles. These include the village tiles that shipped with the original game, as well as the village tiles from White Moon. And they are double-sided as well. One side showing you that the village tile is active, and the other side telling you that it's been haunted and the villager is no longer at that spot. So we'll set those aside. I have bagged some of the original White Moon components, the gate, and some of the play or some of the markers for um, Su Ling are in here. Empty bag, sorry about that. And nothing else is in the box, so everything fits in this really small compartment. Very nice insert though, with beautiful artwork on the inside. So let's look at see what comes in this box that I purchased. And here I fit everything that um, needs to be used to play the game. You have all the haunters, all the Taoist monks and the Buddha chips in there. We'll get down a little bit lower for you guys. These are all the artifacts. And here we have all the villager tiles. The Chi tokens. The Yin Yang tokens along with all the colored tokens and the dice and the moon crystals. So as you can see everything was able to fit back in the original box. Now some people are going to use um, plastic baggies to do that and that would be fine. Just know it is going to be a challenge because there are a lot of components that go to this game. So with that let's actually lay out the game board and show everybody what it looks like when the game is fully set up. And now we have everything laid out on the table ready to play. As I had mentioned earlier, there's just a huge number of components that ship with the base game and its expansion, White Moon. What we're going to do right now is focus on just the pieces that we haven't shown in too much detail and wrap it up with some quick final thoughts and conclusion on the game. The first thing you're going to notice are that the there's quite a few ghost cards that ship with the game. Now these are just ones I pulled out to show you the fantastic artwork. And I'm going to try to get the glare off these, but all of the cards are just beautifully illustrated. Great, great card art from the first card to the last card. And I'm not going to go into the rules because there's quite a few um, threads and, and video reviews on the gameplay itself. Now the game board is set up and I'm going to show you what all the components do when they are set up. The first thing that you'll see is the modular board in the center. These are the small tiles and the game has nine tiles that ship with the original version plus a blank tile that you can use to create your own village tile. There is a tenth tile which is the Kung Fu School which is right here um, that is used when you play the White Moon expansion. I have also put to the side the guardhouse. The guardhouse shipped with the original game and it's simply not used with the White Moon expansion. Or it can be substituted for another tile if you so wish. And again, as I mentioned, the back side is when the village is haunted or that village tile is haunted. And looking again at the setup of the game, there are all the villagers, there's three sets of villagers in each corner of a tile. The first one is upright and the bottom ones are face down. Looking at the villager tiles themselves, you'll notice a couple different things. In the upper left hand corner is the family name um, that is used. The three number, and in this case two, is how many members are in that family. For instance, the Lee has three family members, and this is the daughter. On the left hand side is the penalty you have if this member of the family is killed. And on the right hand side shows you the reward you get when you save that entire family of three. Some tiles, or this tile, for instance, has the Buddhas placed on them, and these are just gold little Buddha figures that are really well sculpted. And then there's the Talus Monks, which start in the center tile. And each of these are color-coordinated. 
Also you have the gate, which goes in the center tile as well. Around the board you have all the player tiles. And they can be in any order that you so wish, on any side facing that you so wish to play with. As I mentioned earlier, each of these player boards is double sided. On the corners are these little corner cut pieces where the pedestals will sit that house the moon crystals and they have their own gameplay mechanics as the game goes on. So we'll just put that back. Each player starts off with a designated number of chi depending on the difficulty level that you're playing with. In this instance this is the beginning game so there's four chi. Each player starts with their yin yang and one of their color tokens which is used to exercise specific ghosts. And as I said earlier, each of them starts off with the same number and their own unique yin yang and colored token. There's four dice that are included in the game, which are these. Three of them are white, which all the Taos will roll. And then there's a special ability of one of the uh, Taos monks, which is the green monk, to roll an additional dice, which is gray. And there's also the cursed dice. Four of the sides have bad negative effects and two of them are left blank. There's four moon crystals, which have their own gameplay mechanic, and they are seated right there on top of the pedestal when they're used. There's four inactive power tokens, which show that that power of that specific monk cannot be used. And they're simply placed, uh, I have the wrong color here, but they're simply placed over top of that to show that they can no longer use that power until this token has been removed. There's eight haunter ghosts. Now a lot of people have painted these online. I would suggest people going to look and see some of the color schemes people have used because some of these people have painted them really, really well. And then there's the Su Ling. Su Ling is a good character that helps you as the game progresses. She was shipped with White Moon itself. There's an Enfeeblement Mantra, which is used by one of the Taos monks. There's eight different artifacts, which are dual-sided. The opposite side just shows you the effect of that, so you don't have to use a cheat sheet or a player aid to figure out what they do. There's additional color tokens and power tokens, which are used for two-player games and single-player games, and I guess even three-player games. Um, and there are the two decks of ghosts. One of them are the active ghosts, and one of them are the incarnations of Wu Fang. And these are the big, big boys, the hard ones to kill. And again, fantastic artwork on all of these cards. And as I showed you earlier, there's a couple different other additional boards. There's the shelter board, which you use to house all of your rescued villagers. And then there's the grave board for all of your dead villagers. So what do I think of, of Ghost Stories? Well, Ghost Stories is absolutely one of my favorite co-op games, if not my favorite. It's extremely hard, it's extremely challenging to beat. Um, I think we've played it probably two dozen times and beat it less than a handful, so four or five times total. Um, there's different challenge levels that you can play under, and we've always played under in intermediate or beginning, and we still seem to fail to win. It's just a hard game to play. Um, the ghosts seem to always come up at the wrong time. There is some strategy involved, obviously, to try to figure out uh, when to draw cards and when to hang back and when to attack and when to use a village tile. Overall, this is, like I said, one of my favorite co-op games. It's got some of the most beautiful artwork I've ever seen in a game, especially on the artwork for the ghosts, um, even on the player boards themselves. It's wonderfully produced. It's got really solid cardboard components throughout. The miniatures are really well done. The cards are well done. They're thick card stock. Um, the player boards are, are well done. The addition of the player aids is a great idea to help speed up the game instead of having to look through the manuals every five minutes for some of the iconography that's used in the game. Overall, this is one of the best co-op games I've ever played. I would suggest it to anybody that's into co-op games. Just know you're going to have a hard time beating the game. So with that, thanks again for watching.